Hi, my name is Neil Blevins, and this is a tutorial about using the new Open Subdiv modifier uh, that is inside of the new version of 3ds Max. So, personally, I'm really, really, really excited to finally have this ability inside of 3ds Max, and hopefully, um, over the course of this video, I'll show you why it's really exciting that we finally have access to this. So, uh, as a quick intro, the uh, Open Subdiv uh, technology is based on the Catmull Clark um, Subdivision Surfaces technology, which has already been implemented inside of Maya, inside of Mudbox, and a number of other packages out there. So, we finally have access to it in Max, which not only gives us a bunch of useful features, but also gives us uh, compatibility with all those other pieces of software. So, if you need to move your um, object back and forth um, between the different uh, different applications, you can do that. So let's get started. So previous to open subdiv, you'd use the turbo smooth or mesh smooth modifier to do your smoothing. And uh, I'm going to show some of the differences between these guys. So we'll start off uh, like the turbo smooth modifier. Open subdiv is just a modifier that you add on top. Um, and it is right here. And you have control over the number of iterations that it does. So you can see there. And uh, the same with turbo smooth the turbo smooth modifier and then you have the same number of iterations. So so far the two of them look pretty similar to each other although there are slight differences to the way it's doing its uh, smoothing which um, I'll show you later. But the first big advantage uh, here is creasing. So if you go into here and you select your edges and you increase the crease value on them. Um, here let's hit uh, show end result so you can see the result of the, the open subdiv modifier you can see the nice smoothing which is happening here and you can get uh, a nice uh, from your, your box, you can get a box that has those nice um, filleted edges around the outside if you increase the, the crease value here. Creases go from 0 to 1. And now if we go over here, the creasing that was uh, in the old version for Turbo Smooth, let's uh, select some edges, these creases all did something a little bit, a little bit odd here, where instead it, it like all of a sudden you have this like hard edge here, or at least it appears to be a hard edge, um, but it's sort of this pincushiony effect, and that's really not the results that we're looking for. Really, what we're looking for is something where you have your your square, your cube, except it has those nice uh, rounded corners. Now you could get something like this using uh, Turbo Smooth, but instead of using the creasing, turn that back to zero, what you'd have to do is you have to add a bunch of extra edges. So say you'd um, go here and you'd do a connect and you'd put two edges right near these edges here. And then do the same with these guys. And the same with these guys. And uh, the, actually, there's a new um, uh, chamfer modifier in the last version of Max that would let you do that a little bit faster. But the same results are, you, you now get results that are a lot closer to this, but look at the number of extra faces you have. So if you go here under Object Properties, you have 54 faces being generated uh, as your, your base mesh, as opposed to this one where you only have um, six faces of your original object. And there are lots of advantages there. Uh, first of all, there's fewer edges in your viewport, uh, fewer faces in your viewport, which means everything um, goes a lot faster. Second of all, say you want to make this, um, you know, uh, change the, the, the value on your crease. You can just go here and you can change the value on your crease. If you wanted to do the same thing over here, you'd have to now manually go in and select those edges and scale them down and then select these edges, do the same thing, and then these edges over here. And so it's a lot more cumbersome to change your, your crease values using Turbo Smooth with all these extra edges than it is doing it here. So it's slower to change and it's also uh, way more uh, faces in your base mesh, which makes uh, editing things uh, much more difficult. Now it's very infrequent that you want to add, um, you, you want to smooth only a single object, at least if you're doing hard surface stuff. Usually you have hundreds of thousands of objects that you want to apply um, some sort of smoothing or, or creasing to. And so what we have is we have the new crease modifier. And let me show you how that works. So let's say we have a 
bunch of objects instead of just one. There we go. And we want to crease the, the, the whole bunch of these. And so what you do is you select all the objects and then you go to crease set and you can now select all the edges on all the objects and under crease sets here you can now create a new crease set. So let's call this test and there we go. And now if you take an open subdiv modifier and put it on top of this you can see all those edges are creased. And the nice thing is we can now go in here and we can change all these simultaneously on all the different different objects. So this is a little set which has been created which you can then add new uh, edges to, delete edges to, like um, you know if we go here and select that edge there you can now go to here and say subtract selection from set and now that edge is no longer creased. Or let's take a, let's take a bunch of these and remove it from that edge. That. And those guys there. So now those edges are now no longer part of this crease group. And if we go down into the original object, the reason it still looks a little bit creased is because the edges themselves have crease values. So let's remove those there. Turn that to zero, turn these guys to zero. There we go, that's more what I would expect. So the crease set modifier sits on top of what we had on the base. So because my base still had creases on it, the uh, crease set just over, um, overrode those. Uh, but now once I took the creases out of the bottom and then I take those edges out of this crease set, it's no longer being applied um, here to, uh, there, there are no creases ap applied to these edges, which gives you these uh, much more smooth rounded results. And you can do as many crease sets as you want. So say you want uh, a bunch of edges to have a value of 0.3 and then a bunch of values to be uh, 0.6. You can create multiple crease sets and then modify them over all the objects that you have um, the, the modifier assigned to. So now let's look at a practical example of uh, actually using um, the open subdiv modifier. So say you have this tank tread here and uh, this tread previously when I built it I had to add, add all those extra edges you can see them here all those extra uh, edges near the the uh, main edge in order to smooth properly and uh, the result is um, um, here 67,000 polygons and then that's even before smoothing so that's 67,000 and then I smooth it on top of that using turbo smooth to get those nice smoothed edges now this one here is only 17,000 uh, polygons. It doesn't have any of those extra edges that you can see. And now we're going to smooth this with uh, open subdiv. So if I just apply the open subdiv as is, of course, it's going to do absolutely the wrong thing and it's going to get all mushy. You can see like these tank treads right here are, are, are super, super mushy. So what we want is we want to add creases to this, but this is a lot of objects and, you know, 153 objects. So I don't really want to crease that uh, by hand. So what I'll do is I'll go to the crease set modifier. And there is the select by face angle here. And this allows you to really quickly select edges that are, are hard um, between, um, you know, an angle of, of zero and uh, 90. So if we take this and then we go into edge selection and we have 90 plus or minus 5 degrees and say select. That now selects all those edges that we want to apply a crease value to. So now we go here and we'll do our crease set. We have our crease set now and let's maybe put this to a value of 0.3. And now when we do our open subdiv You can see now, instead of being all mushy, now it's doing the correct thing. And now it is adding those nice um, fillets all over the surface. And this is one area that the Open Subdiv modifier in Max is uh, actually even better than uh, inside of Maya because uh, you're actually able to select these edges very quickly using that selection tool, uh, whereas it's more uh, cumbersome to do that. So. Um, Again, really, really, uh, you got a the low, um, low polygon base mesh, and you're able to select the edges you want really quickly, apply a crease value to them, 
to the whole bunch of them and then you're all set to go and it's real easy to modify that crease value after uh, later so if you want like a tighter crease here and then you want uh, uh, not nearly as tight here you can do that by adding multiple crease sets to finish off, one little uh, note about mapping. Um, if you've ever used Turbo Smooth and a mapped surface before, you've run into this a lot and it probably drives you nuts. And um, if you have your surface here and it's got the support edges and then you want to smooth it, you apply Turbo Smooth. And you'll note the weird artifacts that happen at these, these edges. And uh, there's no good way to, to get rid of those, or no easy way to get rid of those. but it's really easy with open subdiv. So if you take the same mesh and you apply open subdiv to it, you'll note that those nasty artifacts here are completely missing. And what's more, if you go under the open subdiv controls on uh, UV boundary, you have a bunch of options here on how you want it to be dealt with. Do you want it to be um, linear, which produces some um, strange results in this particular case, edge only, which keeps these guys straight now. You can see they're straight all the way down. Uh, edges and corners, or always sharp. And so what this does is, depending on the, the kind of mesh you have and what the geometry of the mesh and what you're trying to do, you now have options on how it deals with all of the different uh, um, um, styles of, of UVs. So there isn't one of these that's always going to be the case. Um, there's different ones that are appropriate in different cases, but now you have the option of changing them uh, as opposed to in the old method where there was no uh, way of fixing it and it was just the way it was. So anyway, um, I hope you found this tutorial useful. Please watch the other tutorial that I'm uh, posting about uh, interoperability between the different um, 3D applications. But hopefully this gives you a little overview on how to use Open Subdiv and why it's a really useful uh, thing to have and why I'm so excited that we finally have these possibilities inside of 3ds Max. Thank you.